I'm posting a series of short videos about the Collatz conjecture, also known as the 3x plus 1 problem. The first one in the series explained in rather stark terms the logical errors that have led to the assumption that this is a complex problem and not a relatively simple one, if not a very simple one. In this video I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into the logical errors that have led to this state of affairs whereby mathematicians believe this is an enormously complex problem and in fact it is not. So first we need to consider the conventional way in which the conjecture is stated which here I've shown as a function with a big warning symbol over it. The function basically says you take an n, usually an odd n, you multiply by 3 and then you add 1 to make it even and then you divide it by 2 as many times as required till it becomes an odd number again and then you repeat the process. So this, when you actually analyze it, is a very odd way to think about a conjecture or a function particularly one that requires serious attention because it's a completely haphazard way of stating it. Uh, I'm going to suggest that the Colas conjecture has nothing to do with multiplication by 3, nothing to do with addition of 1, and nothing to do with division by 2. It's about none of these things. Um, now, the reason for this is because there are some very simple shortcuts you can take to get the same results. And these shortcuts sort of expose the banality of the conventional description. If you multiply an odd number by 3, add 1, and divide by 2 once, like this, 27, 82, 41, <clears throat> what you're really doing is adding 1 to the original number, multiplying by 1.5, subtracting 1. If you multiply an odd number by 3, add 1, and divide by 2 twice, like this, 41, 124, 62, 31, what you're really doing is this. You're taking 41, you're subtracting 1, you're multiplying by 0.75, and you're adding 1. Now why am I doing this or that? Because you can now reduce the function to, to three operations, of which I'm going to show two here. If x plus 1 is divisible by 4, multiply by 1.5, 3 over 2, and subtract 1. If x minus 1 is divisible by 8, multiply by 3 quarters and add 1. And from this you can create series, congru congruent classes, um, mod 4 and mod 8, and you'll see the growth in these classes is completely linear. Uh, 5, 11, 17, 23, 29, those are gaps of 6, or 1, 7, 13, 19, again gaps of 6, but the starting point is different. Now I'm going to skip over the third rail of congruence classes for the sake of brevity, but um, we, we'll get to that later in another video. So this is just the beginning of a process that liberates you from thinking that the Colas conjecture is about a dynamical system, which is what uh, academic mathematicians believe it is. A dynamical system which suggests a level of unpredictability that just isn't the case. Um, this seems to be like a huge wrong turning in the annals of mathematics.